What if I told you you could have a classic looking dress watch that ticks all the boxes for less than 400 UK pounds? Interested? Now imagine if I knocked a zero off that and threw in an automatic movement. Hi and welcome to Last Watch. A few weeks ago I got an email from Emily at Star King Watches. Emily exclaimed that she was a big fan of my channel and wanted to send me a watch for review. Of course, I jumped at the opportunity. If it's not already clear, then I should state that today's watch has been sent to me free of charge. No money has changed hands and the watch is mine to keep regardless of what I have to say in today's review. Star King has been making watches for some 25 years and have been producing their own movements since 2005. They are one of many retailers selling on the AliExpress website. AliExpress is part of the Alibaba group based in China. I guess you could say it's the Chinese equivalent of Amazon. Now the watch that was offered to me was the Starking AM0184. This watch is available in four different options covering a black or white dial, on a bracelet or leather strap and is currently available for well under 40 British pounds. You should also factor in that AliExpress website is littered with coupons and discounts which will no doubt shave a few more pounds off the total price. With regards to today's watch, I asked only that they send me a watch that they thought would look best in a video. The watch took exactly one week to reach me and was delivered by Yodel. It was wrapped in bubble wrap and shipped in a padded envelope. Inside was a white protective cardboard sleeve containing a rather compact box. The box itself was a satin black affair, a kind of mock bamboo with only the Star King name logo and Chinese characters denoting the top of the box. There is a silk tab at one end which you use to pull out a gold coloured drawer to reveal its contents. We have a Starking International Warranty Card. On the flip side some QR codes with links to various social media sites including YouTube, Instagram and Facebook all promoting the brand. Also a small polishing cloth and a resealable plastic bag containing the watch. We have a hang tag with the product reference and finally the watch as you can see they sent me the black dial on the metal bracelet. The bracelet is pretty much shrink wrapped in plastic and even though there are a couple of arrows to point you in the right direction and help you to get started it's pretty difficult to unwrap. Well on camera in any case. I took the plastic off off camera which shortens today's review by around 20 minutes. The watch is a classic design, very much an under the cuff dress watch which wouldn't look out of place on the wrist in an office situation or possibly a formal family event. It's heavily influenced by some big name brands and vintage designs. My immediate thoughts were that it may have taken some of its design cues from Omega, although that could be because I've spent some time recently in the Omega boutique. Spec wise we have a case width of exactly 40 millimeters. A case thickness of 11.3 millimeters, a lug to lug of 48 millimeters, and a lug width of 19.7 millimeters, just under 20 millimeters. The bracelet starts at 19.7 millimeters at the lugs and reduces to 17.8 millimeters at the double push button clasp. The total weight of the watch comes in at 138.8 grams. Resize for my wrist and minus three links, the weight comes down to just under 128.2 grams. We have pretty much an all black dial, though it is quite deceptive because if you catch it in the right light, you can see that it radiates a subtle starburst effect and changes to a shimmering dark gray. The dial has applied silver faceted arrow markers at the hour positions, very reminiscent to me anyway of the Omega Aquaterra. It has printed minute or second markers around the chapter ring. We also have a printed Starking logo and name at the 12 o'clock position. The Starking logo is in itself a depiction of the lotus fruit. It turns out that the lotus is highly regarded in Chinese culture and has close connections to Buddha. Its flower symbolizes perfection and purity of both the heart and mind, and it also represents long life and honor. I guess that makes it more than enough reason to have it as your company logo, especially if your company makes watches. Just above the six o'clock position, we have a printed automatic text denoting that this watch is indeed an automatic. And at the three o'clock position, we have what must be considered the smallest of date windows. 
It is cut with a beveled edge to show a rather cramped black Arabic date on a white background. Now I'm not a massive date window fan, but if you're going to put a date window on a dial, then why make it so small? The Dauphine style hour and hand markers are silver and faceted, which allow them to catch the light, and are therefore fairly easy to read in most conditions against this black dial. The second hand is a simple needle affair which sweeps around the dial in a constant flowing motion. No pun intended here, but the dial is quite stark and almost minimalist by its lack of information. All in, it's not an unattractive watch and the more I look at it, the more I appreciate its clean aesthetic. This clean dial is protected under a slightly raised, scratch resistant flat sapphire crystal and yes, it really is sapphire. As far as I can see, there doesn't appear to be any anti-reflective coating, something that becomes obvious when you wear this watch in bright light, with that black dial giving it an almost mirror-like quality. The case of the watch is stainless steel and predominantly highly polished, the only exception being the top of the lugs, which are brushed and help to add a little bit of contrast. From the side, we can see that the case has a pie pan shape to it, the lugs look like an add-on to this case. They are, however, nicely turned down, which helps the watch to sit quite low on my wrist. I would be more than happy if my Seiko cocktail time was this thin. The lugs do seem to have a bit of a step towards their ends, where they meet the bracelet. I guess this has helped to shave a millimetre or so from their thickness. You can see that the bracelet doesn't articulate fully where it meets the lugs, but that doesn't seem to be an issue on my 7-inch wrist. On the right side of the case, we have the crown. Again, very similar in its design to that of the Omega Railmaster. The crown is etched with the Lotus Fruit logo. Quite a nice touch as it's something they could so easily have left out. The crown isn't at all integrated into this case, quite the opposite in fact, as it seems to sit on a little pedestal. Getting to grips with it shouldn't be a problem. Sadly, popping the crown shows the watcher's lack of refinement as you struggle to find the setting positions for setting the time and date. On rotating the crown, you will feel and hear the click as it finds its way into the relevant position. The watch hacks and hand winds and does have a quick set date facility. I find the date change to be quite snappy, flipping over a little before midnight. Moving on to the rear of the watch, and this is where things become much more interesting. We find a screw down display case back showing the automatic movement inside. You can see I've left the protective sticker on the back to show the Lotus logo attached and I think the marked 5 indicates that this watch was made during the month of May. If that's the case, then this watch is straight out of the factory. The display case back has a silver relief of the Lotus fruit at its centre. If you look beyond this, you can clearly see that some attention has been paid to the finishing of the movement inside. There is some basic pelage work to the free moving but quite audible rotor. We have a gold escapement and matching cogs some blued screws and ruby jewels, all in clear view. It's hard to find any great detail, but Stark can claim that this movement is their own. It's made in-house at their factory in Shenzhen. This is the, and pardon my pronunciation, the Jingru Caliber 1813S, high beat movement running at 28,800 beats per hour, or 8 beats a second. There are rumours that suggest this movement may be an Eta or Mayota clone, but the good money would suggest it's based on the, and again, pardon my pronunciation, Dixmont Ganju DG4813, which in itself was a clone of the Eta 2824. Disappointingly, my watch is running at between minus 30 and minus 32 seconds per day. However, this watch does seem to be quite popular on the forums, with many people suggesting they are a bit hit and miss for accuracy out of the box, but fairly easy to regulate if you choose to do so. The power reserve is around 36 hours. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a dual count for this movement. Around the display case back is where we find more detail on the watch, some of which was notably absent from the dial, such as its 50 meter water resistance. Interestingly, a quick skate on the AliExpress website warns that this watch is not waterproof in hot water. I'm not entirely sure how hot is too hot. You may have to take your showers cold with this one or stay out of tropical rainstorms. The bracelet isn't too shabby. It's a mix of polished and brushed surfaces. It pretends to be a three link affair, but it's not. Those separate looking links are all one piece, meaning the bracelet isn't as flexible as it makes out. Nonetheless, it's a comfortable wear, it doesn't seem to carry much weight, but appears to be solid and not rolled steel.
It's quite well integrated between the lugs. Its fit is quite precise. I think this is helped by the solid end links. It tapers ever so slightly to a double push button deployant. The buttons are quite modest, almost hidden behind the bracelet. Once released, the bracelet reveals a milled butterfly clasp, something you might not expect for a watch at this price. I have removed three links from this bracelet to fit it on my 7 inch wrist. Some half links or even some micro adjustment would have been appreciated. I should add the watch uses split pins and was pretty easy to resize. Initially I wasn't keen on the bracelet, it seemed a little two dimensional. I think the transitions between the polished and brushed areas could be sharper and a logo at the deployment might help to break up the monotony of its design. Yes, I'm being somewhat harsh and I need to remind myself that this watch is cheaper than your average fashion watch or entry level Seiko 5. In summary, let's weigh up the positives and negatives of the watch, starting with the negatives. I'm used to wearing bigger tool watches. This watch is 40mm, but as a dress watch, I think they could have gone smaller. There is so little happening on this dial, 38mm might be more fitting. I also think the handset would look better on a smaller dial. The date window is barely readable. I would give it more presence. If not, then remove it completely. Maybe machine the links in three parts and add some much needed contrast between the polished and brushed areas. In any case, I would buy it on a bracelet and treat yourself to a decent leather strap. I think this watch has the potential to pop on the right piece of leather. Some refinement on the crane position would be good, as would better accuracy out of the box. Also, I think the brand name has been lost in translation. I asked for clarity on this and they are actually called Star King. That's two separate words. But all the branding of this multi-million pound company is Star King. Now, this obviously hasn't been an issue selling to an Asian market, but it might help their cause if they want to become a global brand. And an applied Star King on the dial would look pretty smart. Now on to the positives. We have a classic looking all stainless steel dress watch with sapphire glass and a display case back, 50 meter water resistance, high beat, in-house movement, solid bracelet with solid end links and a milled clasp, all for less than 40 pounds. On paper that spec sheet is quite astonishing. I don't know how they can be making any money on this watch. Their profit margin must be pretty slim. I guess they must be selling these by the truckload. Bear in mind I have a £50 quartz Timex with none of the features that this watch boasts. No doubt many of you will grimace at the fact that the Star King is Chinese, but a lot of watch manufacturers, especially micro brands, source their parts from Asia. This being a Chinese built watch shouldn't be an issue. It comes with a pretty meager 12 month guarantee, something hopefully you won't need, but for the price it is pretty much a throwaway watch. I'm not sure anyone would be making a claim unless of course it's dead on arrival. Personally, I wouldn't have chosen this watch for myself, but I'm more than happy to wear it until I pick up a worthy dress watch. The affordable alternatives I'm considering with this spec are around 10 times more expensive. Interestingly, my family don't share my love for watches and yet both my wife and daughter like this watch. A big shout out to Emily for sending me the watch. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on this Star King, or better still, if you've had experience with a brand. Feel free to like the video and make a comment. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, I'll catch you in the next video.